We've already covered how the nucleus can grow through the rules of spherical dense packing. This was accomplished by adding proton-electron pairs to a nucleus and then correcting for the number of electrons in the nucleus via beta decay. The simple nuclear reactions we covered previously are used throughout the process of building larger atoms. Let's examine how we construct the larger atoms using the structured atom model. We have so far examined elements up to carbon. Let's explore how this shape changes as we move up to calcium. Here you will notice that some of the structural patterns are starting to emerge. These are recurring substructures on top of the carbon-like structures. In some sense, these are the building blocks. Let's explore these basic building blocks and see how they can fit together and shape the structure of the nucleus. A nucleus of deuterium. Two protons joined by an inner electron, in other words, a deuteron. A V-shaped structure. Two deuterons in a V-shaped structure. A nucleus of lithium. A ring of five protons with a cap proton on one side of the ring, packed into three deuterons. It is the upper part of a pentagonal bipyramid. A nucleus of beryllium. This is four deuterons packed together. A nucleus of boron. Here we have five deuterons packed together. A nucleus of carbon. Two rings of five protons with a cap proton on top of the upper one and on the bottom of the lower one. Or six deuterons packed together in two rings with caps. If you've had a chance to look at the SAM nuclei on the Ethereal Matters website, then you may be interested to know that the colors you sometimes see relate exactly to these shapes and building blocks. An individual proton electron pair, or in the mainstream neutrons, are marked in yellow, and a single proton is marked in brown. Let's run through each of the shapes and explain why they are significant. Two capping. This happens when the icosahedron is growing and just one deuteron is attached to the carbon like structure. This is called a two ending and is colored in green. Neutral capping. This occurs when a branch has grown to a neutral point and is no longer chemically reactive, and this essentially means that the ending will no longer interact with other atoms. Four additional protons and two inner electrons have been added to one side of the carbon like structure in a V shape. This is called a four ending. Neutral capping with an additional proton electron pair. An additional proton electron pair is added to balance the structure or create an isotope. This is called a five ending. A lithium nuclet. The next step in the growth following the neutral capping and the addition of a proton electron pair is to add another proton and create a lithium nuclet. Beryllium ending. This is an intermediary state between the lithium and carbon nuclet. Boron ending. This is also an intermediary state. Carbon nuclet. This is a complete icosahedron. An initial ending. Both sides of the carbon are capped with four endings making this branch completely chemically inert. When all branches are capped, the element is noble. A final ending. The final shape of the carbon nuclet represents the effective backbone of the nucleus. This may also be called a backbone nuclet. There is a difference between the initial carbon and the following carbons that connect to it. The connection happens through a shared proton, which means that subsequent carbons in the backbone provide only 11 protons to the structure, not 12. As a consequence, a new secondary carbon in the backbone only contains 5 deuterons and a single proton not six deuterons. This does, however, have an implication for the ratio of protons to neutrons in the nucleus as the atoms grow larger. This is fixed by what they call the quasi-inner electrons, but this is a topic that we will cover in more detail in a future video. Let's discuss the phases. Building up to the icosahedron shape from the tetrahedron is called the building phase. Continuing from the icosahedron to a point where the nuclets are made inert is defined as the capping phase. The nucleus grows from element to element as a general rule with steps of two protons switching between the building and the capping phase. At this point, it's probably important just to recap some of the definitions. 
an ending. This is a stable geometrically arranged cluster of protons and inner electrons. A nuclet is a densely packed geometrically arranged cluster of protons and inner electrons that belong to the building phase. Capping is a geometrically arranged cluster of protons and inner electrons that belong to the capping phase. These nuclets and capping phases are representative of chemical properties. They carry these properties with them to the larger nuclei. As an example, a lithium nuclet has an oxidation state of 1, and this is carried to the larger nucleus as well. So the first nuclets and capping phases are repeated in all the larger elements. Branching and elongation. As the elements get larger, this scheme means that there are more possibilities in terms of where the nucleus can grow. This is one of the main reasons that there are so many transition metals. In general, during the growth, the building phase seems to be preferred over the capping phase. This probably has a lot to do with the increasing options available and therefore the chance of a nuclet completing before another spot starts growing is reduced. This means we see growth at several places on the nucleus in parallel. To get a better understanding of what is happening, we must look at the basic nuclet structure. As we grow the nucleus, we can see that the perfect carbon shape becomes distorted. With sulfur, chlorine and argon, we reach the state of two distorted carbon nuclets. This likely means that energetically the nucleus would like to be in a complete noble state, and that the lithium nuclets are not the preferred configuration. Yet they are the only option when the elements grow, and if the area is available for proton capture, or neutron capture, then a lithium ending will be created. Potassium is the next alkali metal. This has a lithium nuclet on one side. Moving on to calcium, we see there are now two lithium nuclets, and this creates the first branch in the structure. Moving along, we see copper, which has four carbon nuclets. But they are not completely capped. If we now jump to krypton, this is inert as it is completely capped with five carbon nuclets. The branching continues, the nucleus elongates in this process of adding new carbon nuclets to the background structure. If the structure did not elongate, but we added to the first branch, we would see colliding branches very early on, and we would therefore be unable to create heavier elements that we know do exist in nature. If we now look at the structure of silver, and compare it to the structure of xenon, it should be clear to see why silver is considered a noble metal. Gold too shows this same property. Colliding branches. Collisions or close contact of branches happen just after lead, which also happens to be one of the last stable elements. Radon is the next noble element, but it is unstable and decays. If we examine uranium, we can see more clearly the problems with two branches coming too close to each other. Further growth on that spot would lead to overlapping of potential spots. Hence it must and will react. If the structure allows it, an alpha particle or larger chunks are ejected. Uranium therefore decays to other daughter products. The proximity of the branches is what causes the natural radioactivity in most of the elements. This is a topic we will discuss in more detail with the SAM team in a separate video. Elements above lead are unstable because the nucleus can no longer provide a stable configuration. There is always a balance with the nucleus wanting to be in the densest packing state, but there are limited points from which the structure can grow. This leads to the fact that individual branches are in the densest packing configuration, but the nucleus as a whole is not. The reason there are still elements above lead is due to the fact that the nucleus is more or less overloaded in a semi-stable state. It can do this because the outer ending can structurally still hold the next viable configuration. The nucleus becomes elongated because if it did not, it would decay much sooner. But there is a limit. The last unstable but structurally sound element which can be created with SAM is americium. Elements above americium are artificial and can only be created by fusing nuclei together with brute force. The resulting nucleus is without structure that can be described with SAM, and only exists for a few milliseconds before fissioning again. The building blocks of the nucleus using these rules through the alternation between building and capping 
is what leads to the periodicity of the cycle of eight we see in the periodic table. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like and share this with as many people as possible. And also a massive thank you to all my supporters on Patreon and those that support me through PayPal. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.